We're not a democracy. We're a republic. It's one of those claims you'll hear on the internet that is meant by the person espousing it as some sort of proof of their superior political knowledge. What the sentence actually shows is that this person misunderstands both the political systems in question and the sophistication of their own political knowledge. To find out why, let's take a deeper look at the difference between these two. The term republic comes from the Latin res publica, or public affair, and it refers to the idea that governments are not the personal property or prerogative of a monarch. Democracy, on the other hand, comes from the Greek words demos and kratos, or people power. Democracy was invented by the Greeks and most developed in Athens, where it operated as a direct form of government. That is, one where people themselves decided on the policies for the polis, or city. They did not choose someone to decide for them. In the modern world, however, this type of system has never been implemented as a type of government by any country anywhere in the planet. The country that comes closest is Switzerland, which has a strong tradition of democracy by referendum, where people have directly enacted any number of policies, including regarding pensions, immigration, taxation, and so on. Hopefully, it's obvious to you why this Athenian form of democracy has never been tried as a form of government. But if not, just consider what a country would look like if every government decision had to be voted on and approved by the people living in that country. Just as a matter of expediency, it would be a problem with certain matters, such as declaring war. But the complexity issue would be even worse. There would be no bureaucracy for one thing. But even if there was, the level of knowledge people would have to have to make good decisions would far surpass what people have now. In other words, one needs far less knowledge to choose the best representative possible than one would need to enact the best possible policy. The Founding Fathers knew this, which is why they were so against the idea of democracy. Because for them, democracy was Athenian democracy. They, however, were not against people power. For them, all authority derived from the American public. It is not a coincidence that the preamble of the Constitution makes clear that the people are the ones establishing the new constitutional system. But notice that the preamble says, we the people. The Founding Fathers were claiming the American nation as the ultimate authority, but it was the framers who were speaking for the people. What the Founding Fathers established then was a representative or delegative democracy. A place where individuals would freely choose someone else to represent them in government decisions, or what the Founding Fathers would have called a republic. And if you don't believe me, let's check in with our friend James Madison, who is considered to be the main architect of the Constitution and who wrote in Federalist 10 his definition of democracy. From this view of the subject, it may be concluded that a pure democracy, by which I mean a society consisting of a small number of citizens who assemble and administer the government in person, can admit of no cure for the mischiefs of faction. Hence, it is that such democracies have ever been spectacles of turbulence and contention, have ever been found incompatible with personal security of the rights of property, and have in general been as short in their lives as they have been violent in their deaths. And in Federalist 39, his definition of a republic, we may define a republic to be, or at least may bestow that name upon, a government which derives all its powers directly or indirectly from the great body of the people and is administered by persons holding their officers during pleasure for a limited period or during good behavior. The confusion about the terms then arises from the fact that while direct and representative democracy mean exactly what they have always meant, the common parlance used in the 18th century to refer to them, democracy and republic, have changed. That's because well into the 1800s, the idea that the authority of government should come from people was radical. Prior to that time, most of the planet had been ruled by one type of monarchy or another. Even in Europe, as a result of the American and French revolutions, however, this began to change. And now, basically everyone claims to be democratic, even when they're clearly not. Thus, today, when people say democracy, they mean a place where people have rights, one of the most important of which is being able to choose their leaders in free and fair elections. But here's the thing. This change has meant 
that monarchies can also be democratic, as is the case with the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. And republics can be non-democratic, as is the case with North Korea. And that's because, again, republic simply means having someone in charge of government who's not a king, while democracies at their most basic mean people being able to choose their leaders. Thus, people who say that we are not a democracy, we're a republic, are wrong. We are both. Which is why every single American president, including Trump, from the 20th century on, has called the United States a democracy. They were not mistaken. They were simply stating a fact. And now you know why.